Now at 11, new travel bans as the pandemic continues to plague the globe and details on new rules for those entering the U.S. A key to getting COVID under control, the vaccine. As more mass vaccination sites pop up and eligibility increases, there's worry about supply keeping up with demand. And later, meet the Portland group turning littered cigarettes into something new. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. This is KGW News at 11. And we begin with the low elevation snow tonight. This is what conditions look like along Highway 26 headed out west towards the coast. You can see some snow on the sides there, but our photographer says the roads are in pretty good shape there. Right now it's more soggy than snowy here in the valley, but we could see a wintry mix by the morning. So let's go straight to Chris McGinnis. Chris, a lot of people just keeping tabs on this forecast. What can we expect? Yeah, and good reason to as well, uh, Brittany, because the temperatures are going to drop just a little bit more tonight, and that means that the snow levels may bounce back down just a tiny bit. But here's the thing. The precipitation is generally winding down here. The radar certainly shows that here over the last couple of hours. The uh, significant uh, rain and snow that we saw across western Oregon this morning is now being increasingly confined to the higher terrain of the Cascades and the Coast Range. That said... You see all those green blobs offshore? There are still lots of showers yet to work their way onshore. And at the same time, the atmosphere is starting to cool down just a little bit. So that increases the chance that we could mix in a few wet snowflakes down uh, at lower elevations. This is a look right now from tripcheck.com. That's ODOT's website uh, up at Highway 26 near the uh, Sunset Summit. Uh, that's at 1,400 feet or so. And you can see, again, it's down to 32 degrees. So a little lower. We're 36 right now, Forest Grove, 36 Battleground. Cam is down to 35. Same story in Sandy and Happy Valley. And as we go a little farther south, Salem now has slipped to 34. And uh, so have McMinnville and Dallas. So we don't have far to go in parts of the area to get close to the freezing mark. That's something we'll have to watch overnight. I don't expect a widespread freeze in the valley. In fact, right now it's 40 at PDX with a south breeze. Dew point remains above freezing as well. That's kind of key as to one of the reasons why I don't think Portland gets below freezing. But the, the short story here is that there could be some icy packets or uh, pockets early tomorrow morning, something we'll keep a close eye on. Also, another threat for some low elevation snow arriving on Tuesday. More on that coming up in just a little bit. All right, good to know. Thanks so much, Chris. And when we have a forecast like this, it's a good reminder to download the KGW app. You can also stay up to date on KGW.com and our social media pages. Well, if you've flown out of Portland, you probably know about the economy parking lots at the airport. Well, today, one of them served as a mass vaccination site for people invited by OHSU to get their shots. Tim Gordon reports it was for a select group, but there are big plans to vaccinate tens of thousands at the site. On a cold, rainy day, it was a blessing to be able to stay in your car and get the COVID-19 vaccine. With flying way down, the red economy lot is closed to travelers and it makes a great mass vaccination site. It's very exciting to be part of it and we're trying to do everything we can to get people vaccinated. It's the best way to get our community back on its feet. Those being vaccinated today are part of phase 1A that includes people with disabilities and their caregivers, both professionals and family members. As the director of an institute that focuses on people with disabilities, I'm so thrilled that we're all coming together to make sure that we're meeting the needs for this part of our community. More than 150 people are making this happen. The Red Cross has about 50 volunteers here helping OHSU and PDX on day four of a four day run. It brings tears to my eyes to think that we are helping to bring so many people this vaccination, helping them get healthy and bring some sense of normalcy back into their lives. There are other vaccinations going on. Major health care providers have joined forces at the Oregon Convention Center. Their current focus, health care workers and those working or living in long term senior centers. Back at PDX, we talked to a family that got the vaccine, including a young woman who has autism, which puts her at greater risk. We asked Geneva how she felt after getting the shot. Good, not nervous but not scared either. Geneva's parents are her in-home caregivers, so they got their shots too. Relieved after a long drive to get here. We live in Bend, actually, 
and we drove over this morning to do this and so it was totally worth that's that's how important it was for us the importance of the vaccine and getting many more people protected by it this parking lot will remain set up and ready to do just that as more vaccine becomes available by the end of today we'll have vaccinated 3300 people our goal is to make this a mass vaccination site of 7,500 to 10,000 a day. Up in Southwest Washington, we saw no setup activity for a state-run mass vaccination center at the Clark County Fairgrounds. The goal was to open Monday, but now Clark County Public Health says the state will open it on Tuesday. Tim Gordon, KGW News. Now, the Washington State Department of Health hopes to vaccinate about 540 people a day at the Clark County Fairgrounds. That number will increase as the vaccine supply increases. It's by appointment only. Folks in Clark County can start requesting the shot if they fall within tier one of the 1B category. That's anyone who's 65 and older or people 50 and older who live in a multi-generational household. Those eligible can fill out COVID-19 vaccine request forms on the Clark County Public Health website. And starting tomorrow, teachers and other school staff in Oregon become eligible to get the vaccine. Those connected to schools in the greater Portland area will be contacted early this week by their districts. They'll get an online link to sign up for the shot. Nearly all of those vaccinations will take place at the Oregon Convention Center. The mass vaccination site will start giving those shots next Wednesday. As more people become eligible, some worry about supply keeping up with demand. As of today, Oregon has given out about 61% of its supply. And we know you have a lot of questions about the vaccine and how to get yours. There are still a lot of unknowns here, but we have a team dedicated to getting you the answers. You can text that number on your screen 503-226-5088 with your questions, or you can simply text the word vaccine and we'll send you a link with our latest coverage. There's some hopeful news in Oregon's fight against COVID. Case numbers appear to be trending down. Every day this past week, daily case numbers have been below 1,000. Today, state health officials reported 582 new cases. That, by the way, is the lowest number that we've seen in several weeks. The last time Oregon saw a daily case total under 600 was back in early November. However, that new, more contagious UK variant of the virus is spreading in the state. Today, the OHA was notified that a third person has tested positive for it. That person is from Washington County and does have a known travel history outside the U.S. Health officials also reported three more deaths today. 1,880 people have now died here in Oregon since the start of the pandemic. Tonight, protests in Tacoma against police brutality. This after videos surfaced on social media showing a police cruiser running over at least one person in downtown Tacoma last night. It all happened while a crowd of people gathered for street racing. This is the video of one of we the don't crews. Know going on. We're about to show you some of the video of one of the cruisers driving away. Two people were hurt during the incident. One was released from the hospital. We're told the other person did not suffer life threatening injuries. An outside police agency is now investigating whether the officer's use of deadly force was justified in this case. And we don't know what was going on with that officer. We do know uh, we've been told that there was uh, people pounding on the cars. Uh, I'm not sure if there was damage in the cars and windows were damaged. Uh, the officer, obviously, whatever his thought pattern is, becomes part of the investigation and the decisions that he made. Tacoma police say the officer, fearing for his safety, tried to back up but was unable to do so. The officer involved has not yet been identified. The city's police advisory committee is set to hold a special meeting tomorrow night to discuss the incident. A well, cleanup program in a Portland neighborhood means the waste from cigarettes gets turned into new products. Christelle Kumwe tells us how the repurposing helps retirees find new purpose. John Gillette, a retired psychiatrist, has called Portland home for eight years. In retirement, it kind of takes a while to figure out, you know, what you're going to do and how you can be helpful. The answer came to Gillette one day when he stepped out of his condo in the Pearl District. I walk around the neighborhood, it's exercise, it's hiking and stuff, 
it really it's sort of irksome to see all the litter and the cigarette butts. To help, Gillette joined the Cigarette Waste Recycling Program, an initiative by the Pearl District Neighborhood Association, started by Dave Mitchell. The program is designed to collect as many cigarette butts as we can by using uh, about 65 receptacles that are uh, attached to uh, parking poles. Mitchell put up these cigarette disposal boxes around the neighborhood in 2019. When they're done, we just ask them they put it out so it doesn't catch fire inside and they drop it in there. Volunteers, mostly retirees, spread out in different parts of the Pearl and then the clean team goes to work. One of our team members will come by, empty it out. It takes Gillette over an hour to complete his runs and collect about two pounds of butts. Oh, it's awful. <laughs> yeah, it smells and it's caustic. They've collected over 100,000 butts in the past year that otherwise would have ended up on the street or in a drain storm than the river. The cigarette litter can leach toxic chemicals and contaminate water. And this is our little way of, of trying to make life just a little bit better for, for the environment, and we think we're having an impact. The impact has a national reach. The collected butts are shipped to a plant in New Jersey called TerraCycle. The company recycles plastic waste in them and partners with companies to turn them into new products like lawn furniture. For John Gillette, the repurposing of the butts is one more reason to keep up his patrols in the Pearl. And the pleasure when you walk to see that the streets look clean. <laughs> Knowing that you're preventing that kind of toxic pollution, that's a, a positive also. The group goes around every few weeks to pick up the cigarette butts. The Pearl District Neighborhood Association is in need of volunteers for their different committees. If you're interested, we have more information on our website at kgw.com. In the Pearl District, I'm Christelle Kumwe for KGW News.